I begin a video with a shot of a fairly messy workbench and why focus in on a handmade sign that looks as if it were made by a child saying tool shop. Well, join me on this episode of Perkins Pipes as I debut one of the estate pipes that I recently got and refinished, restored, and find out why. Welcome back to another episode of Perkins Pipes. You may be wondering why I'm dressed in Purdue University gear, uh, especially after I had a, a recent episode, I think, with some Indiana University gear. And if you know anything about college sports, those two schools are great rivals. And for this one, I've got the uh, an estate pipe, something that a friend uh, gifted me recently. This is a K Woody. It is a zero. 9B model, which is a medium pair, has a four-hole stinger, and as a um, uh, someone on the uh, K Woody, uh, one of the K Woody groups on Facebook, uh, helped me to identify. I thought that this was probably late 30s, maybe more likely early 40s. So there's a reason for this particular pipe. There's a reason for the produced stuff, and there's a reason why I started this episode with a look at my workbench, and that curious sign above it. So let's find out what that's all about. Let's get this guy lit, and let's get to talking. So what's this all about? Well, this is an episode dedicated to my son. It's about my son, and that's why uh, this particular pipe, that's why this particular hat and uh, pullover, and why you saw what you saw at the beginning of the video. So, There we go. Um, enjoying this little K Woody for the first time. And since this is an episode about my son, uh, the reason I wanted to bring out this estate K Woody for its debut was because uh, the first pipe that I smoked uh, was my dad's K Woody um, large pot of which you've seen in some other videos. So this is kind of a family thing. So kind of in honor of my dad, but I wanted to debut uh, one of these estate pipes. So decided on the K Woody for this. And I'll tell you right now, First of all, if you like this kind of thing, you like uh, the finer things of life, like talking about pipes, talking about family, all the meaningful things of life, then I invite you to hit subscribe. We've got a wonderful growing group of subscribers and people who interact on YouTube, over on Pipe Cottage Social, and on all the uh, pipe groups on Facebook as well. So my son is graduating from Purdue University um, in just uh, really a few weeks, I guess, probably about a month it would be. And he's majoring in industrial design. If you want to find out what that's about, I'm going to put a link uh, in, uh, at least in the, uh, the notes below the video, maybe we can get a link in the video as well. to a blog post I just recently put out about industrial design. He had a senior design showcase at Purdue University. My wife and I went to go see that. I had a wonderful day hearing from all the seniors in the industrial design department.
as they shared not only with family and friends, but also industry professionals uh, about the designs that they were coming up with. And um, you can find out about what industrial design is uh, on that blog. You can find out more about my, my son's designs uh, on that blog. Got a lot of pictures there. Uh, and we talk a lot about that. What I want to talk about the, you know, today, though, is my son and how he got started. Uh, my son's name is Austin. And that sign that you saw above uh, my, my workbench, which is I'm recording this one in, in my garage, You always see my workbench behind me. That little sign that says tool shop is something that my son made when he was very, very little. And I remember huh, I remember very well, as a matter of fact, coming home one day. And when I came home, he had made that sign. And as you can see, I'll put a picture of it up here again. You can see the child, the childish writing, um, the blue paint there, uh, saying tool shop. He made that. And I was so excited to nail that up above the workbench. Where it has stayed for well, be, I guess, close to 20 years. Because um, he was a little boy when he made it. And uh, I love it. It's one of those things that, you know, if we were to ever move, that sign would go with me. And that sign would go into my new garage or my new workshop. You see, when... Our children were little. This is true for both our son and our daughter. They didn't really like to play with the childish versions of things. They didn't go for the toy versions. My daughter didn't really go for the plastic dishes and kitchen stuff, although she had those things. She wanted to play with the real stuff. Uh, and the same thing with my son. He had... Um, uh, I think my wife's brother. Gave him this uh, Sears Craftsman plastic uh, tool bench. It had a, a, a backboard, kind of like a, a pegboard, very similar to, to the one I have here in the garage. Uh, you could hang your plastic tools. It was cool. It was all get out. And he had it in his room and he played with it some. But he always wanted to gravitate to the real tools. Uh, even if that meant real versions that were just smaller um, and made for a child's hands. He wanted the real thing. Over the years, we did so much together in the garage. Started off with just simple sanding. Probably, and I, I, I probably just started him on some plain sandpaper, just sanding some, some piece of wood. I know for a fact his first power tool uh, was a hand sander. And, and I remember his hand on the hand sander, my hand on top of his, and, and we were you know, sanding some piece of wood together. And then he sanded it by himself. And of course, working up from there to the other, out of the other power tools, eventually, you know, a scroll saw and then you know, drill and table saw and a handheld jigsaw and um, all these sorts of things. Um, and so he became adept at using those things. One of the things we always used to joke about, um, we would say, we had a little motto, um, Austin and I. We said, scrap, it always works. 
And we said that because I kept so much scrap wood, every project might only have some ridiculously shaped little piece of true scrap wood. I'd say it had big box of scrap wood. Because you never knew uh, when a particular piece of scrap wood was going to be just the right thing uh, to work on something else. Uh, he once had a, a basketball goal. Uh, actually got it from the local grocery store. It was for a, a March Madness Coca-Cola display or a, a something like that. Um, and uh, it was as cool as a metal metal pole and, and had a, a real uh, hoop to it, real net. And it must have been toward the end of March Madness uh, and uh, with college basketball. And uh, I'd gone in the store and I said, hey, I said, you know, what would you want for that? I said, I'd love to have that for my son. The guy says, we're done with the display. You can go ahead and have it. Uh, so I brought that home, put that in his room. Oh, my goodness. I had, had one of those, uh, you know, miniature uh, uh, basketballs. Shot that thing. in his room all the time, and eventually the net wore out. So, um, well, obviously we could have bought a new net for it. Instead, we went onto YouTube and found uh, a tutorial on how to make a basketball net just out of shoelaces. And we had grand fun uh, doing that, and we, we were just so proud of ourselves for making that um, uh, net work perfectly. Um, just out of shoelaces, and, and, and we had fun with that. Over the years, we made other things uh, around the house. I remember his first project that he really made um, pretty much entirely by himself. Uh, found it, uh, I think, maybe in a, um, a woodworking magazine. Uh, but it was a little uh, caddy for condiments to take to the picnic. So this was a little, little box, had a handle, and you could put, um, you know, your uh, ketchup or your mustard or, or whatever. Um, for the outside, you stretched um, bungee cord and um, painted it the colors that he wanted to. Uh, and that was all done entirely uh, with hand tools. So just entirely with, with a saw, a hand saw. When we got into watching, it was a wonderful show on, um, I guess it's on Netflix now. It started off on the History Channel. It's called Forge in Fire. And it's all about, it's one of these competition kinds of shows where they bring in some people and uh, they, they bring them into a, a blacksmithing forge and you have to make a knife and or a blade of some sort. Uh, then the two winners from the first round, they get another challenge and they go back to their home forge, which is very often their garage. and make uh, some historic blade. And so we were watching that show, got really into that, and decided to make a try to make a, a knife ourselves. And we didn't have the forging equipment, so uh, we were cutting it out of an old uh, circular saw blade uh, that I had. And um, then we fabricated a, a wooden handle for it, and then we got some leather and made our own sheath for it. And, got the wood burner and burned some sort of design in it. So we were always doing those kinds of things. So I guess it's no surprise that uh, when he went to go to uh, university as an undergraduate, uh, that he wanted to study industrial design. And over his years of study, he has, and again, you can go to the, the blog post that I mentioned earlier, uh, and you can see some of the things he's designed. Um, he's, you know, projects at the uh, department they had the students do, he's made lambs. Made a child's board game. Um, he made a, a candy dish um, out of, uh, it had to be designed around a space theme. It, it involved 3D printing. Uh, he made uh, a spatula. He made an ice cream scoop.
And you say, well, some of those things sound pretty simple. Uh, couldn't you have done that in a high school shop class? The deal with industrial design is about finding new designs, sometimes for very common items that we've had before, uh, to make them more usable, make them uh, better suited for different kinds of people. But then industrial design is also about coming up with new ideas entirely. Um, one of his designs that uh, won a, a design award uh, was something he designed for the Garmin company, which is, uh, uh, they do uh, GPS and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, he designed something, again, it would be good for young people, younger children. It was a set of binoculars with GPS built in to help identify and, and you know, what it is you're, you're seeing, what it is you're looking at. Among the things that he's uh, really into uh, now that he's graduating, and, um, he has a job, uh, but uh, at, a, at a design studio, actually, not too far from where we live. But I think his passion would be to design things for outdoor sports, so hiking, rock climbing, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, he's, he's big as an outdoors person. Big outdoorsman, uh, likes to, um, well, loves to hike, loves to climb, loves to camp. So I really just wanted to talk about my son and what he's into uh, while enjoying this little K. Woody medium pair. And I want to throw something out there for you for the comments section. I love the comments. I respond to pretty much everything, um, uh, certainly as much as I can. I love my son dearly. I love my daughter dearly. They mean the absolute world to me. And together with my wife, uh, there are no other three people on the planet that I would want to spend time with. Who are those people for you specifically? Uh, I want to lift up uh, or lift up the question. Tell us about your kids. What are your kids like? Those of you who have children, those of you who have grandchildren or great grandchildren, what are they into? What excites you about your children and your grandchildren? What makes you proud of them? Uh, what are some of their accomplishments, the activities that they're into? I just absolutely love everything uh, about both my son and my daughter. But since this is my son's graduation uh, from Purdue University, and I'm really thinking about this um, design uh, showcase that he had, that's why I wanted to do this episode. So, as Malcolm Geith likes to say, I do these little things in order at last to do nothing, or as I like to say in Latin, parwa ago utundem. Nihil Aga. And in this one, a special word to my son, Bob, I love you.